Should the COVID vaccines be compulsory for all citizens in the UK? So I think this is a really difficult question. I think, you know, vaccines do two things. They protect the individual who's vaccinated, but also collectively they provide herd immunity for those people that are not vaccinated. And I think there are obvious cases where people can't be vaccinated in the case of people that may be receiving cancer treatments or otherwise you know, suppressed and those patients can't, well, vaccines could potentially be dangerous for them. So a one size fits all policy saying everyone should be vaccinated must be vaccinated, doesn't work. Even not in the cases of people that are medically exempt, I think that's sort of over, <clears throat> that's probably an oversimplified way of looking at it and just making it compulsory. And I think that may introduce a degree of hesitancy within the population. People may be more sceptical about the vaccine. There's already a certain amount of anti vaccism within the community, and there's certain feelings towards vaccines held by a small minority of people. And I think bringing in, making it compulsory could, if anything, make that worse. So I think I was <clears throat> doing work experience recently with a, with a GP originally from India, and one of the things he was doing was he was going out and talking to big communities where vaccine uptake is quite low. And he was saying, you know, we, we discussed the reasons for that, and he said that, you know, historically, maybe it was a distrust of the medical profession for a whole host of reasons, but and it's something I agree with him on is that education is probably the best way, you know, really convincing them why the vaccine is so important, how it can help us return to normality, how it can help, you know, get cases down, get mortality and death rate down. And I think, yeah, I think the sort of one size fits all policy of just making it compulsory is probably not the best approach to it, an approach where, you know, specifically target groups that perhaps or areas perhaps that are not taking the vaccine at the same level as everywhere else. Um, is probably a better approach and really focusing on education, whether that be in schools, whether that be, you know, uh, perhaps religious venues, if it was a, if that was a religious view that was being held. Um, and I think finally, the point to make is that for many diseases to achieve herd immunity, you don't need 100% of the population to be vaccinated. It is fine to accept a very small minority of people might not take the vaccine for whatever reason, and yet you can still achieve you know, a decent level of population uh, protection against the virus. So let's explore why this was a really good answer to the question of mandatory vaccines. The candidate started off by talking about what the function of vaccines are and how they're used. This started the candidate off well, and then he crucially moved on to talk about herd immunity and how this works. Yet we'll come back to that in a second. After this, the candidate spoke of some exceptions uh, to vaccines and how some people aren't actually suitable for them. He gave some uh, detailed scientific knowledge as to how someone may not be eligible for a vaccine. This showed the examiner that they had done their reading and they actually knew knowledge that was above and beyond what is expected of them. He also gave some knowledge of some current events surrounding anti-vaxxers who have been in the news recently. And I really strongly encourage that you do the same. He also opened up a discussion on his work experience and how he'd met a doctor who was doing research on the reasons for people not taking up vaccines as readily as uh, Public Health England, for example, would hope. This opens up a discussion that can continue for the rest of the station maybe, and uh, really puts the interviewee in the driving seat because they can talk about the situation that they were in rather than have the interviewer ask them questions. So if you can bring up your work experience, again, I really strongly, strongly encourage you to do so. Once the candidate had covered all of the uh, this, um, he then moved on to talk of some alternatives that may be used uh, as opposed to uh, mandatory vaccines. He really highlighted this point on education, which is currently the main way in which we hope to increase vaccine uptake rates. Education is absolutely key, and the candidate spoke at length about how you may want to um, get some more education into the general public surrounding vaccines and how they function and why they're so important. I really strongly encourage, again, for you to talk about this in any station surrounding vaccines. Education, education, education. I can't stress it enough. And then finally, coming back to herd immunity, the candidate spoke of the fact that we don't need 100% vaccine uptake rates, just because if we have a certain level of immunity, those who aren't vaccinated 
are still protected. Now a bit more on vaccine hesitancy. Vaccine hesitancy is the delay in accepting or complete refusal of vaccines despite the availability of vaccine services. When I think about the causes of vaccine hesitancy, I like to think about the three C's. So first off, we have complacency when patients don't think they have a very high risk of getting the disease or they prioritize another health or life issue over getting the vaccine. So an example of this would be hesitancy towards the MMR vaccine because of the perceived risk of developing autism spectrum disorder. So in this case, parents prioritize not getting autism spectrum disorder over protecting their children from measles by getting the MMR vaccine. The second C is convenience. How accessible are vaccine services and how affordable are they? The third C is confidence. How confident is the public in the vaccine, in its mode of delivery, and in healthcare professionals? So when we're talking about solving this issue of vaccine hesitancy, it's really useful to tackle these three Cs one at a time, and that way your answer will be very structured. So if we look at convenience first, in the UK specifically, the government along with the NHS have made massive efforts to make the vaccine as accessible as possible. It's free of cost, we have vaccine walk-in centres and you can also book an appointment online, so it's super convenient. Now looking at the other two C's, complacency and confidence, the only real solution to these issues is education, as the candidate mentioned. It's really important for you as a healthcare professional to explain the benefits of getting the vaccine to all of your patients. At the same time, it's really important that you listen to their concerns and their questions and queries. Medical schools expect you to give a balanced answer in complex ethical situations like this because they want to make sure that you validate and listen to every single patient's opinion. It's important that you do so because invalidating their opinion is only going to reduce their confidence in the healthcare system even more and they're bound to continue to be hesitant towards the vaccine and maybe even refuse future medical treatments and this is bad so it's really important that you listen to other people's opinions understand why are they scared of getting the vaccine and why they're choosing not to get the vaccine and try to address their concerns to the best of your ability it's important that you listen to other people's opinions even if they don't match yours and lastly it's it's important to remember that all patients do have autonomy and they can refuse treatment if they really want to. Another key concept related to the COVID-19 pandemic is herd immunity. Herd immunity refers to the situation where a high proportion of individuals in a population have pre-existing immunity against a particular infectious disease. This means that the disease won't be able to spread in that population, effectively ending its pandemic or endemic status. Now, there's two ways how you can develop this immunity. Now, that's through either previous infection or through vaccination. Obviously, the WHO recommends developing this immunity through vaccination and not by just letting the disease spread because that would lead to an unnecessarily high amount of cases and deaths. And that would also disproportionately affect our immunocompromised population. By achieving herd immunity, even people who can't get vaccinated are protected because by getting vaccinated, an individual is not only protecting themselves from an infection, but they also can't pass on the disease to someone else, especially the immunocompromised population where spread of an infection would lead to severe disease. Many scientists believe that achieving herd immunity will be the definitive end of the COVID-19 pandemic, but it is really important for us to address vaccine hesitancy and vaccine inequity to be able to achieve that. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Next up, make sure to watch our video on the science behind vaccines. See you in the next one. Our one-to-one -one online interview tutoring offers a tailor-made service personalized to your specific universities and medicine interviews, including MMI, panel, and Oxbridge. Our expert tutors will enable you to articulate yourself, practice mock interview questions, as well as receive extensive feedback on your performance. You will also gain access to our online interview course with over 150 tutorials and over 200 exemplar answers.